Okay, we're going to continue with algebra here, and this is two-step equations, part one. Uh, and <clears throat> we'll start with the rules of algebra, and this is really critical as far as when you're doing opposite operations and getting into showing your work. And if you're not convinced to show your work, uh, please tell me that you're not convinced, and I'll show you some tricky ones that uh, may not be able to solve just by uh, inspecting. But uh, as you move along in your math, you're going to find out that this, some questions are really difficult to solve without algebra. So do write this down. I, I know there's steps that you've written down before, but they really need to be pounded into your head. So uh, the rules of algebra, first of all, our goal is to isolate the variable. So have the variable by itself. Uh, second of all, something that is critical is what you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other. Third rule is if you want to undo an operation, is that opposite operations undo each other. And fourthly, finally, is when we get into multiple opposite operations, the order is important. And what we do is we perform opposite operations in the reverse order of operations. Okay, so it's reverse bed mass. We're going to do the opposite of the adding and subtracting and then the multiplying and dividing. And you'll see that today as we get into these questions. So uh, we're going to look at two methods and jump into them pretty quickly here. The first method is the most critical one, and it's showing your opposite operations. Okay. I know that the answer to this first question is going to be 2 because 2 times 2 plus 4 is 8. However, we need to get in good habits of actually showing the opposite operations. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put a line through all the equal signs. <coughs> and I want to isolate this variable. So the two operations that I need to undo are the adding 4 and the multiplying by 2. So to do the opposite of the adding 4, we're going to subtract 4. What you do to one side, you do to the other. The other thing we learned is step three, opposite operations undo each other. So those two are opposites and undo each other. And now we have that 2c is equal to 4, because 8 minus 4 is 4. Now, to undo the multiplying by 2, we're going to do the opposite operation, which is dividing by 2. So those opposites undo each other. And we are left with c is equal to 4 divided by 2, as you can see here in the circle, which is 2. Okay, uh, the next one is going to challenge some of your integer skills. So in order to perform the opposite operations, we have to re recognize we have to do the opposite of adding 10 and not subtracting 5, but the opposite of multiplying by negative 5. That negative 5 is a multiplication operation. So the opposite of adding first, we're going to subtract 10. What we do to one side, we do to the other, and opposites undo each other, so we cross those out. And now we have negative 5 times x is equal to negative 15, because negative 5 minus 10 is negative 15. And the next one is the opposite. So don't write adding 5. Very normal for students to think that. The opposite operation is what? You're right, it's dividing by negative 5. So those opposites, the multiplying by negative 5 and the dividing by negative 5, undo each other. And we're left with x equals negative 15 divided by negative 5, which is 3. Now, in this last one, uh, a lot of students struggle. They don't know what this means and what it looks like because it looks a little bit different than normal. So what you may want to do is reorder it to look familiar. So the sign, so this here we could put first if we'd like to. So before I even do opposite operations, I want to put the variable term first, make it a negative 3y. And this 9 here, is the same as plus 9. You could, if you'd want to, put a positive sign in front of it. So if I change the order, this is actually negative 3y plus 9 equals 3. The most common mistake I see students make if they want to change the order to make this look a little bit easier, to have the variable term first, mm -hmm. is some students think that this is the same as 3y minus 9. And it's not, because this 9, this, the sign that comes in front of it, it's a positive 9, and now you've just made it a minus or negative 9. So just be careful about re how you reorder these. Uh, but I would suggest it's easier to do it when you reorder them. Because here's what I'm going to recognize, is that we recognize that to uh, isolate the variable, the first thing we're going to have to do is the opposite of adding 9, which is subtracting 9. So those opposites cancel each other out. And we are left with here, negative 3y is equal to 3 minus 9, which is negative 6. And the opposite of multiplying by negative 3 is dividing by negative 3. 
So these are very typically tricky ones for a lot of students to perform because they have trouble reorganizing this when they start. But you should have an answer here of y is equal to 2. So they're solving with opposite operations. Next, what I like to do is have us just do two with algebra tiles and then wrap it up. So uh, to solve these with algebra tiles, let me just show you what they look like. So first of all, and again, pause it if you'd like to. The first thing I represent here is this. Okay, so uh, let's just move this out of the way here. So you should understand that this diagram represents the equation above. Okay, so 2c looks like this. Uh, 4 is 4 shaded squares and 8 is 8 shaded squares. If you're solving this with algebra tiles, which is kind of neat, uh, what you need to do instead of doing opposite operations is you're going to do opposite tiles cancel each other out. So the idea here is to isolate the rectangles, we need to cancel these tiles out, those tiles that are circled. So how are we going to cancel out those tiles? And the idea is we're going to cancel out those tiles with white tiles because uh, they're opposites. So in this case, let me go ahead and grab some tiles here, got a whole bunch of them. <coughs> Where we're going to start is by adding four white tiles to this side, because that's going to cancel out the red tiles. But if we do that to one side, we have to what? Do it to the other. Okay. Uh, next, we want to see what this all represents and what this looks like. Okay. So I'm going to cancel out all the opposite ones. So these four shaded squares cancel out with these four white squares. And on the other side, you'll notice that these four white squares undo those four shaded squares. So at the moment now we have that two C's is equal to four. So if we look at this here, let's just look at each one. Now what we know is if two C's is equal to four, each of these C's is equal to two. So your final answer is that each C is equal to two. Okay, uh, next, let's just do one last one. Ask yourself what would this diagram look like? And I'll show you at the, in just a second. Ask yourself what's going to be rectangles, squares, and what shade. So here's what it actually looks like at the moment. And again, you're going to want to sketch this out. We don't do too many of these. So this represents negative 5x because they're white, and then plus 10 because they're positive, and then negative 5, they're white. So the first thing we're going to want to do is cancel those. 10 shaded squares because we want to isolate all the rectangles. So to cancel them out, we're going to use the opposite shade. So in this case, we need to add a total of, and this will take a little while, but maybe you can copy this down as you're thinking about it. We need to add a total of 10 white squares to each side. Because if I want to cancel them out on one side, I need to, if I want to cancel them out on one side, I need to add the same thing to the other side. So uh, here's a total of. 10 white squares on that side, that will cancel out the red squares. And if I add 10 white squares to one side, I have to add 10 white squares to the other side. Okay, so, whoops. Uh, if you're ahead of me, what you might want to do is start thinking about which squares cancel each other out. And again, opposite colors cancel each other out when you're dealing with algebra tiles. So in this scenario, when you're looking at it, what we have is that these 10 white squares and 10 shaded squares undo each other. So I'm crossing them all out. But none of these undo each other because they're all white. So if we're finally going to group these off, what we're going to see is that each one of these rectangles is equivalent to three white squares. So your final answer is that each white rectangle, a little bit tricky here, remember that white is negative, but each white rectangle, so each negative x is equivalent to negative three. 
So the final thing that you need to do is if negative x is equal to negative 3, you're going to make a cognitive sign switch in your head and think to yourself, if negative x is negative 3, what would positive x be? And you can just switch the signs. So positive x would be 3. Uh, that's it for the lesson. I'm going to show you some extension problems here in just a second if I can get these up. So here's the extension problems if you want to know where we're going. Uh, that will be really helpful for you. And I'm going to do these pretty quickly and point a few things out as we're doing them. So uh, here is an extension lesson. So first thing you do, as in all cases, you're going to see where these are similar and different. So what I did in this case was I chose ones that were all uh, quite similar, but wanted to point out small differences. So the first step for this one is going to be adding 5. Okay, the first step for this one is also going to be adding 5. So you can kind of see some similarities. First step for this one is also adding 5. And finally, what you're going to notice, so these cancel out. First step for this one is also adding 5. And this one is one of the tricky ones. So is adding 5 actually going to undo that operation? The answer is no. So what you might want to do is remember what we did earlier is reorder this because this is actually negative 2x and then plus 5 is equal to negative 11. So what's going to undo the adding 5? And the answer to that is subtracting 5. Okay. Next, we're going to summarize all of these at the same time. So I want to show you the similarities and differences. So here we're going to have 2x is equal to, and negative 11 plus 5 is negative 6. Next one, we're going to have negative 2x is equal to, and negative 11 plus 5 is negative 6. This one, we're going to have negative 2x is equal to negative 7. This one, we're going to have negative x is equal to negative 7. And this one, negative 2x is equal to negative 16. So you might want to pause it or look at it. You don't have to write this stuff down and ask yourself, what is the next opposite operation? Okay. So for this first one, the opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. The opposite of multiplying by negative 2, so don't add 2, is dividing by negative 2. The opposite of multiplying by negative 2 is dividing by negative 2. This, la this next one, you already have a solution. You might want to remember, so if negative x equals negative 7, you can just do the sign switch where positive x equals positive 7. Okay? And the next one, the opposite of multiplying is dividing by negative 2. So let's summarize. I'll draw these black lines here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, although we already have an answer for the fourth one. This one's done. Okay? Let's summarize. So this one we have x equals, and negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. This next one we have x equals positive 3. This next one we have x equals, and here's something interesting, don't be scared of the fact that this one is going to be a decimal number. Okay? So, or you could leave it as a fraction if you'd like to, but the answer here, <coughs> if you wanted to get a decimal number, the answer would be negative 7 divided by negative 2, and that's 3.5. So you could leave it as 3.5 or 7 over 2 because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And the last one, your answer would be x is equal to 8. And that is all.